Oh, there we go. So, yeah, so I think it's working. Well, we not everybody. Um, so I'm sure it's all going to work. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> we just work with a lot of faith. It's going to work. Yep. So we got the thumbs up. Yay. Okay. Bulavi Nak, everybody. Okay. Oh, yeah. So I think it's working. Bulavi Nak, we. Yep. Okay. So it looks like we are all live. And I think we're ready to go. Yep. Okay, so Pulavinaka, Dr. Kirsty, we are here for our talk story, the first uh, talk story for 2021. Yeah. So I'm excited, at least we can uh, have this opportunity to uh, talk about Suva. Um, and it's just really um, reassuring that you are willing to. Uh, you know, come along and uh, tell us on this platform. And uh, we're going to be traveling to all the places that you mentioned in your thesis. Is that what uh, our plan is going to be? You know, pretty much. But I think I just kind of thought about all the places around VT Levu in particular, like, yeah, in a circuit. <laughs> I was just trying to think of places off the top of my head. So, yeah, I've got the list up. So next month is now Zori and then Bao, Biwa, Raki Raki, Taviuni, Lambasa. So they're off BT level, obviously. Ba, Singatoka, Kandavu, the Asawas, and Namosi. So your favorite is last. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be a good way to end the year. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. So for those of you who are listening in, Bulevinaka, uh, Isimelingoro, Esla Sanga. Uh, thank you so much to those of you who are logging in today to be part of our talk story uh, with uh, Dr. Kirsty Close. Um, so, as she's saying, we will be traveling to different parts of Viti Levu, um, and we, I can think I can also hear Kandavu in there. So, that's yeah. really good to include that in the mix. So, let's go straight to our presentation that we have prepared. Um, yes, Dr. let me, um, oh, you need to enable the screen sharing. Okay, all right, I will do that. Uh, okay, yep. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, there we go. So do you wanna kick start? Yep. Um, Okay. All right. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. We're not going to level to uh, everyone who um, listening in today. Uh, so it's a Saturday in your part of the world, in Australia uh, and in Fiji. Um, it's a Friday here in uh, Hawaii. So we're really happy that uh, we can be able to uh, be here together and uh, have this uh, Talanoa or talk story um about Fiji um so I think on behalf of uh, uh our people in Fiji Dr Kirsty uh we would like to say Vinakavakalevo to you um for uh, taking time away from your busy schedule and also allowing us to walk with you on the different places where you walked on uh when you were in Fiji doing your PhD uh, research so for those of you who are logging in today uh, this is going to be a monthly feature um, that on uh, the first Saturday of every month, we hope that uh, we will have this talk story where we'll travel to different parts of Fiji and uh, yeah, and learn about the history of the place, um, you know, kind of going down memory lane and also uh, talking to our listeners. Those of you who are connecting in, I can count we have about 92 devices. Uh, wow. that are, are connecting in right now. Um, and so maybe we want to apologize to those of you who are waiting uh, earlier on, uh, just some technical glitches um, here in Hawaii and also in Melbourne, uh, but never mind, it's all, uh, all okay now. So we are all uh, 
connected through uh, this platform. Um, and so to our listeners, uh, while uh, myself and Dr. Kirsty are having our talent, Noah, uh, you're most welcome to also uh, make uh, comments in the comment section. And also if you have any questions, you're welcome to ask questions as well. And then also in the middle of our Talanoa, we have a surprise guest um, who will be joining us. And uh, he will also uh, going to, um, you know, to share his perspective on what he remembered about Suva and some of his uh, uh, memories uh, connecting him back to his uh, genealogy and his uh, history uh, of where he comes from. So I won't mention the name, uh, it'll be a surprise guest. Yeah, so we're to everyone who uh, um, is connecting in today, wherever you're connecting in from, from Japan, Konnichiwa, um, from Fiji, Mbulavinaka, from New Zealand, um, Kia ora, um, and uh, also to our friends from Europe. It's really nice to see that many of them are uh, connecting in as well. I know it's early in the morning uh, in Germany and in the UK, uh, but it's really uh, heartwarming yeah, to see many of you listening in Vinakavakalev. So our talk story today, for those of you who haven't uh, uh, joined us last year when myself and Dr. Kirsty were uh, doing our talk story session, it's going to be focused on Suva. So those of you who were following our Instagram posts, uh, you must have seen uh, Dr. Kirsty doing her TikTok videos, uh, as well as uh, myself and Dr. Kirsty sharing some uh, old photographs um, of Suva. So I think at this time, uh, uh, Ola, Ola Samu, Anderson, Ola, Dolovina, Tausa, Nimo, Vinakava, Kalevu, Nasema, Chukumai. Sakusa, Malani, Maiwiruiri, to the Maiwiruiri family, thank you for joining in. Seni Colini Sao and Malcolm Andrews uh, in uh, the United States and New Zealand, respectively. Wow, uh, they're all connecting in. And surprise, surprise, maybe not surprised, Opeta Alapayo. Hey, <laughs> that's so nice. Yay, so he's also logging in. So while I'm mentioning um, the previous director of the National Archives, uh, maybe at this time, I would like to acknowledge the National Archives of Fiji mm -hmm. um, for allowing us to, you know, utilize some of the resources that they have. The Fiji Museum. Uh, thank you to the Fiji Museum with some of your amazing photographs um, that we are also using. Uh, not forgetting um, the University of the South Pacific. I have to uh, acknowledge uh, Dr. Kirsty, uh, acknowledging our dear friend. Dr. Nick Halter. Um, mm. I really want to acknowledge him because uh, him and his class, they set up this uh, Fiji history uh, portal. Uh, it's really, really informative. So if Dr. Nick is listening, if someone can tag him, uh, that we are really acknowledging the work um, that his students uh, and himself have done. Would you like to say something along that line or any acknowledgement, Dr. Kirsty? Oh yes, well, yeah, it's um, a big bulla to Opeta and, and Nick. I think Nick was going to try and join in. So hopefully he's made it home in time. And um, yeah, he and his class did amazing work on, um, I think they were mostly focusing on the buildings around Suva, but their website's great, great photographs, really good information that's very reliable because it's well researched and everything. So. Oh, we're very lucky to have that and it was I think a starting point for you and I with a lot of um, our thinking for today so mm. yeah. Thank you Dr Kirsty and I think for those of you who are listening in um, Dr Kirsty and I have uh, planned to do this collaboration to I think break those barriers I think uh, when it comes to research because uh, a lot of our young ones and our people, uh, oh, I can see Dr. Nick joining in. Yay! Yeah. Dr. <laughs> Nick. Um, so uh, I think this is an opportunity yeah, for us to allow the libraries and the archives and the museums to come alive. 
Mm. I think that's one thing I like about this uh, platform and about the social media that we can use this platform to share some of our own research, particularly for you, Dr. Kirsty, uh, because you know you did a lot of this uh, uh, research for your uh, PhD. Um, mm. And maybe before we start on talking about SUVA, can you just like briefly explain uh, in a nutshell the theme of your PhD research to give a little bit of context to some of our friends? Yeah, so, yeah, I was going to say this really is um, like it's expanding on anything I did for my thesis because it was very focused on the history of the Methodist mission from around 1900 to 1964 when it became an independent church. So mm. I looked at the slow efforts to decolonize the church over time and looked at the Toko farmers movement, for example, up around Tavua. Um, and then just all the debates within the church over the six or so mm. decades to say, you know, whether they should um, make it an independent Fijian church or not. So, yeah, and I looked at how it was kind of organised around race and culture and language. Mm. Um, so, yeah, that was my PhD. But this is really fun because I spent a lot of time in SIVA, but I've never done the kind of um, place specific research and I've, yeah another great resource was Trove through the National Library of Australia and Te Papa mm. um, have great material that's digitized too so um, I think that was they were the main places I ended up going mm. but yeah in addition mm. to looking at the Fiji Museum and National Archives sites mm, absolutely mm. and I think uh, uh, not forgetting the Mitchell uh, library in mm -hmm. Sydney and the Turnbull Library um, in uh, Wellington, as well as the National Library eh, uh, of New Zealand as well. So for those of you young ones who are listening in, um, you know, this will be a, a good opportunity for you to, um, uh, yeah, to kind of, you know, um, expand your horizon. So when you're doing your research, these are all the places we are encouraging you to go to. And the positive thing is a lot of these libraries and archives are digitally uh, available. Okay, so I think many of those young ones who are doing your research utilize this uh, this platform. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been amazing being able to look at old newspapers and things and mm. pull all the details together. Absolutely. Mm. Okay. Um, so shall we go on to the next slide? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So here, uh, welcoming everyone um, from uh, the different parts of Fiji, uh, wherever you're logging in from. Um, so we know we have lots of uh, maps of Fiji, but this one uh, shows us where Suva is, because uh, that's the focus of today. And uh, definitely, we will also travel a little bit to Levuka to recap on our Talanoa last year on Levuka, eh? mm, Binaka. And uh, this one here is a, a lovely uh, map that I often use um, to welcome our uh, young ones listening in from the three confederacies in Fiji, uh, Kumbuna, um, Burimbasanga, and Tovata. Uh, so I hope that our young ones that are listening in and the parents as well, you know, can encourage our young ones to identify as to which of this confederacy that they belong to. Um, as for me, I'm uh, originally from Kandamu, and uh, it's right down on the south of Fiji, which is the best part of Fiji. Um, and uh, uh, so if you notice Kandamu at the bottom, uh, it's uh, under uh, the Burmbasanga Confederacy. Yeah? So that's the Matenitu on Burmbasanga. I thought Namosi was your like your place, but yeah, no, that's uh, good to know. I think the week we look at Kandavu or the month we look at Kandavu will be pretty special. Yes, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really glad that you uh, incorporated Kandavu and Namosi side by side, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, so. Mr. Budindilo will be very happy. And I think I can see some of his relatives also logging in today, um, listening into our Talanoi. So as you can see on this map, 
um, just kind of putting everything into context. Um, you can see the peninsula of Suba. Um, and uh, it's also interesting to see the harbor. Yes, yeah, so you've got the harbor of Suva. Um, I always get a lot of uh, questions from people as to why Suva was chosen as the capital after Levuka. Um, and I think from some of the books that I've read um, and the people that I've spoken to, uh, they've kind of highlighted the fact that uh, um, Suva has this harbor um, and also we have much more land space uh, you know, to expand, uh, especially for uh, a city to be built, you need space. Um, unfortunately, in Levuka, uh, space is not a luxury. Uh, as for those of us who've been to Levuka, you'll know that there's a, a limited space on the uh, beachfront of Levuka all the way to Levuka Bakoviti and all the way back to Nasova. And then you have the, the cliffs you know, starting behind um, the Levuka town. Um, and so way back in the 1800s or 1870s, uh, the discussion eh, for the shift of the uh, capital city of uh, Levuka has to shift to a place. There were other options, apparently. Um, eh, Dr. Kirsty, eh, there were other options or places. Um, and Suva actually got the thumbs up. Um, so today we'll also be talking about um, what was happening, you know, behind the scene and as to why, um, or maybe what happened to those who were living there, uh, where Suva is, as we know uh, the history eh, uh, of our people uh, in Suva who are now relocated to Suva Vo. Um, that will be something that uh, we'll also talk about. And for our listeners, if you uh, have some information that you would like to share, please feel free to also share uh, on this uh, uh, chat at the bottom. So here, yeah, so I wanna share about the Suva Harbor and also the islands over here. So you can see Lothala. And I think my next map had, uh, I think Nukulau and Makuluba, all the other islands, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So you can see the Suva Harbor there and then you have uh, Nukulau and Makuluba. So for those of us who took history, um, Nukulau and Makuluva, they also played a part um, in the history of uh, uh, Fiji um, and also the history of Suva. So they also play a part, particularly when, you know, the Americans and uh, the British people and the Australians and the New Zealanders and many others who were in Fiji too um, at that time. Eh? Um, Anything you would like to share there, Dr. Kirsty? Mm. Um, no, not at, not at this stage. But I think, yeah, all the all the points about Lavuka kind of having a shortened lifespan as, as the capital um, are pretty important. Um, it's such a special place, mm. and it's a shame in a way that it shifted. But yeah, you can understand why. When you think about those cliffs, unless you're going to get really creative on how you build stuff, <laughs> then it yes. was going to be problematic. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So the you know the the prime uh, you know land availability uh, was not there. I think it served its time, and I think we have to acknowledge uh, you know Levuka now being a World Heritage Site and mm. uh, having the UNESCO and the World Heritage Center. Um, in, you know, in Paris, providing that support to our people in Levuka. So for our people of Levuka who are listening in, uh, we want to acknowledge, uh, you know, all of you tonight um, to see the connection uh, from Levuka as the first capital and then connecting to Suva uh, with the formation of the capital in Suva um, in 1882. Yeah, so 1882. And I think that these are some important dates. Um, so for those of you who are listening in, remember, uh, the 10th of October, 1874, was when the signing of the deed of session yeah, in uh, Nasova, in Levuka. And then after the signing, um, then a couple of years later into 1882, but before that, there were decisions being made yeah, behind the scene, uh, as they know that they need expansion, uh, when Fiji was ceded to Great Britain, 
I'm sure Queen Victoria and um, uh, Sir Hercules Robinson, Sir Arthur Gordon and all the governors um, that were ruling at that time, they knew um, that Fiji needs to expand in terms of maybe commerce, right? And uh, um, the rulership in terms of the government, it has to be located in a place where it caters for everybody. Um, unfortunately, uh, Levuka does not fit the bill anymore, even though it's done, uh, you know, it's kind of, um, yeah, it's kind of contributed to the formation uh, of Fiji to be what it is now. So I always acknowledge Levuka in uh, everything that I do uh, for them not to be forgotten and knowing that uh, Suva now is uh, uh, the capital from 1882 till now. Mm. Well, Levuka kind of served as a gateway for everyone coming in from anywhere, really, for such a long time. So, yeah. Absolutely, um, that is yeah. true. Eh? Because uh, I think for those of you who are listening to eh, with uh, what Dr. Kirsty just mentioned, uh, remember in the 1800s, uh, we don't need aeroplanes. Uh, we, we were actually using ships. Yeah, so the steamships was uh, the way of transportation at that time. <coughs> Um, so they need to travel through Fiji and, of course, over Lao being in the center of Fiji in the province of Lomeviti, which is a direct uh, translation of Lomeviti. I think uh, what you said, Dr. Kirsty, makes sense eh? that it, you know, has to go through the middle of Fiji and, of course, uh, over Lao uh, is right there. Maybe if you go back on the map um, so we can go back and just see, uh, yeah, back again. Yeah, eh? so right there. Okay, so they have to come through the Coral Sea. Um, so depending on where they are coming from, particularly those coming down from um, New Zealand, uh, coming through <coughs> Fiji on their way to the United States or on their way to South America. Eh? Fiji is kind of like the hub. Mm. Okay. Oh, very good. <coughs> okay, right. So here our Talano today is divided into three uh, parts. So I will uh, talk about the first part here um, as to who were the original inhabitants around Suva. <coughs> I think this is a, a very important part to talk about. Um, and then we'll also look at what happened at the point of European intrusion. Um, interesting the use of that word. So I'm sure Dr. Kirsty deliberately or knew what that word meant. And then, of course, at the end, we will be looking at how did Suva develop into a bustling town uh, that it is known today. So we kind of, you know, look at certain events, certain points, um, geographical locations in Suva that are important. Um, what else are we going to look at? Yeah, we're going to look at some governors. Um, because remember, uh, some of our streets in Fiji are named after some of, uh, you know, very important governors. Um, uh, who uh, were playing a lot of, you know, important roles eh? uh, in the early part of colonial Fiji. And then we've got some events as well, just big, big events that came up in the research. Right. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll flick through. Okay. Yeah, Vinaka. Yeah. So these were some of the pictures that, uh, uh, you know, we were able to... Um, uh, share and find online. So with Dr. Nick uh, listening in, as well as uh, Opeta, uh, these two gentlemen are very hardworking. Um, gentlemen, they work behind the scene. They don't say much, uh, but what they do is uh, felt uh, by many people, including uh, myself and Dr. Kirsty. So really acknowledging uh, uh, Dr. Nick and uh, uh, his class at the University of the South Pacific for allowing, you know, some of these images that would be remaining in libraries or archives, but now it's out in, you know, in the open. So these are some of the pictures that were taken um, way back in the early or maybe mid or late 1800s. Um, I think you mentioned, uh, Dr. Kirsty, that these would be pictures of Super Bowl. I think so, but it doesn't say. It just says a village near Suva. But you know what? If you look to the end, see, can you see the promontory at the back? I yes. think it does make sense, yes. Mm. And then we've got these two. Wow. 
Um, so yes. that one down the bottom says 1902. So yeah, around the start of the 1900s. Yes. Okay, so these are really good pictures eh, to, um, to look at and uh, you know to reflect upon. And I'm sure those of you who are uh, watching, you know, can be able to visualize where you know this place is right now. So can you also see the year? Might be the same, eh? Um, uh, I don't know if it's on this one, or maybe I'm just losing my mm. vision. I can't see it on this one, but definitely that okay. other one, nineteen o two. And I think these and are all by the same. They're by the same photo studio, so um, and wow. I think the same photographer. I'm still happy in a way, uh, Dr. Kirsty, you know, to see the houses that are still in a, in a Fijian style. Um, it was really, you know, nice to see, you know, that uh, even though in the case of the, you know, our people of Subobo, when they were, you know, relocated, um, but in this case, you know, the Mburevakaviti is still used. Mm. Mm. I think um, a lot of people in these, in the villages near to the town, we're starting to work as um, domestic labourers and stuff like in um, in the European part of the settlement as well. So, yeah, there's a lot of connections in with the community, but um, in, in between everybody, but there's still the distinct Fijian mm. life going on. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also interesting to um, sometimes when I look at uh, some of the historical photos, Dr. Kirsty, yeah, I sometimes kind of, uh, you know, sort of see what the motive is behind the photographer, like, uh, you know, is it done in a natural way or is it staged? So it's always allowing us, the viewer, you know, to kind of like critique what you're looking at. Um, mm -hmm. So maybe that's something that, uh, you know, we can share in today's session. Um, you know, when we're looking through these photos, but it's really lovely. I think Samu Anderson uh, is commenting here and Fiona, um, they're also mentioning yeah, how um, they're really enjoying, you know, seeing many of these old uh, photographs. Mm -hmm. It's pretty amazing. And it's so, so um, it's great when they're such good quality ones, you know, and being able to see people's expressions and, and everything, yeah. Um, let's see what else have we got oh yeah yes um yeah so it was uh, uh fascinating eh, to also see the um the the stories for us to hear and to acknowledge the uh original inhabitants of suva um and i know over the years uh even when i was studying at the university of the south pacific i was very fortunate to do a research on the relocation of Subobo. Um, I had the opportunity to go and interview uh, the late Tuisuwa, uh, Ratu Epele Kanakana, and I interviewed him at his home. I was very humbled uh, by him um, allowing me to uh, interview him. Um, and so, you know, it's very, um, you know, with the people of Suva, you know, that I talked to, uh, those who are from Suva Vo, you know, they're still going through um, this cycle of being recognized, you know, the cycle of, um, you know, wanting their, you know, issue of land ownership be recognized, you know, by any government, I think. So I think the, this Talanoa, you know, can highlight, you know, these kind of issues uh, for, for, for us, um, you know, to kind of acknowledge that, you know, even though we celebrate the, um, in 1882, you know, for Suva to become the capital, uh, but what is always, you know, like hanging at the back of my of my mind is, um, what about the people that were there? Um, mm. And archaeology, uh, you know, is evidence to to that, that where the Thurston Gardens is and where the Fiji Museum is located, um, that was all part of the old um, uh, uh, Suva village. Um, and even the word Suva, uh, it comes from the word Suva Suva. Uh, which is kind of like a heap of uh, uh, stones, yeah, a heap of rocks that used to kind of demarcate, you know, land boundaries uh, back in the day. Um, but even leading up to today, I was very fortunate to uh, talking to different uh, people who were sharing with me um, their stories about Suva. Uh, one uh, lady who 
actually has uh, affinity and uh, uh, bloodline to the people of Suva, um, you know, was mentioning it to me, um, how the original people of Suva have the connections back to Netasiri, um, you know, the Tikina of Vuna. Uh, and even if you look at the notes that uh, we have prepared here, you know, it goes back to the province of Ra, you know, so to me, it kind of, uh, denotes the fact that you know they were migrating you know over different places and mm. over different periods of time but one thing i like about the slides that we have got here is the place names to me that's key and i think it's very important that we don't forget the names of places and knowing the places names they also have meanings yeah so i'm sure most of us know the place called naulubatu yeah, so which is above Walu Bay, and now it's a, a settlement uh, where a lot of, uh, even some of my family from Kandavo, uh, they live in uh, Nauluvatu uh, right now. My mom's younger sister, uh, they live there. And also you can see here that there were evidence of settlements in Tavirua, yeah? um, in Naivuivui. Uh, Naivuivui is on your way to Sawani. Uh, actually, Dr. Kirsty, did you know that I grew up in Lolisuva? No. <laughs> so it's right there. So near the Lesuva, that's uh, where I, I grew up. So my childhood was spent in the Lesuva. And I mm -hmm. want to acknowledge the, um, the indigenous landowners of the Lesuva for giving us a piece of land uh, because we are from Kandavu. We're not from Vitilevo, but they allowed us to come and live in the Lesuva so we can go to school uh, mm -hmm. and we can work and we can um, live. Uh, on their land. So I just want to acknowledge our landowners um, in Vitilevu for uh, allowing us, those of us from the outer islands, yeah, to actually come and live there. Um, uh, let me see, where else? Yes, the, yes, you can see the Thurston Gardens, yeah, over there. Um, so you can see in 1820, here yeah, with all these movements, um, and also the lady that spoke to me mentioned about the Tikino Wuna, uh, which covers the village of Sawani. So the village of Sawani, uh, the village of Navatuvula, the village of Dolisuva, they're all related. You know, they're kind of like all one people and they mm -hmm. all come under the Turang and the Wuna. And she was also mentioning it to me that the word Wuna in Neta Siri also has connection to Wuna on the island of Tavioni. Um, ah, okay. So yeah, you can see the importance of place names. So when they move or when they migrate, um, they take the name of places with them. Um, so that's an interesting point. Um, also, I noticed when the old map that we saw uh, was the island of Lothala. Um, and where USP is, that's called Lothala Bay. Yeah, so where USP is located, but also in Taveuni, across from Taveuni Island, there's an island called Laudala. Ah. So I'm sure uh, for those of you who are listening in, um, you know, if you know the, some of the history of these places, you're welcome, you know, to share, um, you know, some of it as well, um, so that we can be able to, um, yeah, connect eh, the names of places, Vuna and Lodala. There's just two examples that I can think of uh, right now. Eh? Um, and then the last point there, if you can see the Rara, uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Nasova police barracks. Um, wow, look at that. Eh? This is where the Rara of the Kormakao Suva. So definitely a lot of the archaeological remains, uh, even when we do uh, excavations and digs around the Thurston Gardens, we have seen pottery sheds um, that were collected from um, the Thurston Gardens. Yeah, so that kind of uh, confirms that indeed uh, the Thurston Gardens and around where the govern, govern, government, the yeah, government house, yeah, they are all part of the Kormakao Suva. Yeah, so mm -hmm. yeah, makes it, uh, you know, very interesting um, for us to be talking about it today and for us to reflect uh, on this as well, and not forgetting the issue um, that the people of Suva, you know, are still um, struggling to, um, yeah, to 
to kind of yeah, understand and comprehend the decisions that were made by people above them uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the sale of the land of Suva. Um, so maybe at this point, uh, if I can call upon our guest um, to come in and uh, share a little bit with us. Yes, come in. So our surprise guest is here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kirsty, for your invitation. <laughs> My pleasure. As Come usual. on in, surprise guest. Hola. Hola, Dr. Kirsty. Yeah, Vanaka. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you, uh, Dr. Kirsty, and thank you, uh, Dr. T. Mm. Yeah. That's true. Mm. So, mm. yeah, Mr. Um, Bonindil, if you could be able just to share uh, with us some of the uh, points because he's been doing some research as well for this session, oh, uh, Dr. Kirsty, um, about Suva, you know, the history of Suva and what happened to our people of Suva. Uh, to those of you who are connecting from Suva Vo, uh, those of you who have uh, um, genealogy that connects to Suva Vo, we send our regards to you all. And we hope that, uh, you know, our discussion today may lead to, you know, further Talanoa uh, with some of you from Suva Vo. Uh, who may be looking at ways to yeah, consider the issue of land ownership and how the land of Suba was purchased uh, going back to the 1800s. Yes, Mr. Bulindilo. Yeah, Dr. T. Mulabunaka, everybody. Venaka, thank you for inviting me over, Dr. T. As you have said, it has been uh, an issue that has been politicized as well. Uh, so there's a lot of underlying um, um, I can say decisions that were made uh, beyond the control of the real um, owners of uh, uh, Suva village and uh, Kormakao Suva. Uh, and I know that those decisions are beyond uh, anybody's control until today. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we don't want to politicize the issue, but the people of uh, uh, Suva, which is now the village in uh, Suva Vo, they have been engaging um, a lot of uh, lawyers, uh, very reputable lawyers, uh, to yeah to defend their claim uh, that uh, the village of uh, Suva, the original uh, village of Suva, belongs to them, and it's well documented of what happened to uh, uh, to uh, Suva, which is the capital now. Um, I think a lot of people that are listening in, they know the, the story, they can go online, then they can go to mm. uh, the archives. And um, yeah, there was a debt that was owed to the US um, uh, consulate that were, yeah, that were in Suva area around the time, you know, the French and the Germans and, and the British and uh, the, yeah, the United States Navy were there as well. So that there was a debt that was owed uh, to them by the Kambao uh, through the the burning of uh, the the consulate, the U.S. consulate house in in Nukulau. There was an island floating uh, away from Suva Harbor uh, called Nukulau, and uh, there was an Australian-based uh, company called the Polynesian Company that uh, that actually uh, bailed uh, the Kambao way can, back then. Can I just add? It's based in Melbourne. Mm -hmm. Where is uh, logging in from? Yeah. Sorry, troublemakers. <laughs> so they, <laughs> so they stepped in to bail uh, the Kamau because of these claims mm. by um, the 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 U.S. Navy. They actually were there. Mm. They were actually going to take uh, Sero the Kambau to court to claim him for what happened. Uh, the reason why they claim to Sero the Kambau because he was a self-proclaimed uh, Fijian. Uh, king he wants to be the king of fiji so he was he was being uh, tried by them and he was charged with the debt that was owed because of the burning of the nukulau um, residence of the u.s consulate mm -hmm. so the australian company bailed uh, uh, the kambau and um, paid the debt to them so in exchange the kambau gave uh, um, the polynesian uh, company which later became the csr the colonial sugar refinery, this uh, huge portion of land in in Suva. Yeah, they said that he was granted like 5,000 square kilometers of land. That's a huge portion of land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
and it was intended to develop or to plant cotton. Because if you look at back in those time frame, there was a huge demand because of the civil war back in America for cotton. So the Australian company thought it would be a, a good um, section of land to, pl to plant cotton, uh, which did not turn out as a worthwhile investment. Mm. So they basically um, convert them to become uh, sugarcane farms mm. for the CSR. Uh, uh, but I don't want to dwell into the question of uh, mm. why was the Kumbau involved? Because the Kumbau did not earn or did not own sugar. But if you go back to history, this, uh, uh, Dr. T was uh, discussing a lot of issues about um, um, the source of the polity of Vuna, P-O-L-I-T-Y. Polity mm -hmm. is the Fijian word for Vanua. So way back before Mbau became the, the kind of like the, the, center. the center of attraction during the 1800s, uh, the Vanua of Verata, or you can say the polity of Verata was kind of like the the ruling of Vanua back then before Mbau came. Mm. And, uh, and it's interesting what Teresi was, Dr. T was saying about, about the polity of Vuna. And remember, there was also all this Vanua that was struggling all in between. Navuso, you got the polity of Navuso, of Mbau, of Rewa, and Vuna as well. So because of the shift in political alliance, there was always shift in ownership of land as a consequences mm -hmm. or as a result of tribal wars. So we, we have, uh, uh, Suba was claimed by Naita Siri, and once upon a time, Rewa came to claim them. Even the strong uh, polity of Namosi came as well mm -hmm. with the Tunamosi and Televu and Bao and even Tonga as well. Wow. So you can see there was a huge shift in a lot of things happening uh, between this time frame. You're talking about the 13, 14, 15, 16, and even 1700s. And I think the evidence of what uh, Dr. T was saying are place names, mm -hmm. you know? With those place names, you can actually see that the names were related to the dialect or the language that was spoken by all this polity, Naitasiri, mm -hmm. Rewa, Namosi, um, Bau, uh, to say that even Navuso and the polity of Vuna as well. So there were always, whoever was the powerful ruling chief of those era, he is the one who's running the place and he's in control. And then there's another tribal war. So they shift in ownership and whoever owned this place. But when it comes to um, place names, it's actually the evidence of what was happening between who was actually ruling in that particular space of time. So you got names like Nauluwatu, Suva, Tamawua, Tamawua, uh, uh, some people they usually say it's called Tamawua. So it's actually the salutation that is made to a chief, Tamawua. So those are all place names which connects to this polity, mm. to this Vanuas. And you have Samambula. Samambula, some people say you have to divide that uh, 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 name into two, Samambula. That means you are alive. Or you are saved. Or you are saved. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the root word basically explains uh, about where the word comes from. And you have Nasese, Nasoba, Laudala, Muanikau. Muanikau, even. So I think Dr. T has got this a project about place names. Mm. And I think it would be really interesting for somebody mm. or probably Dr. T to go through those place names mm. and find the origin of where that particular dialect or that particular word comes from. Mm. And it will connect to who was ruling or the polity or the Vanua that was ruling Suva at that specific period of time. Mm. And you can connect it to names. Mm. Because I think we are floating in between an era where a lot of things were not documented. You talk about uh, oral, history. oral history, you talk about dance, songs. you talk about songs, but I think place name is a really uh, specific area where you can hone into to see where is this name connected to or what is the root mm. of those names. Unlike um, Western history, uh, uh, all of them are documented, but when it comes to archeological and anthropological research, they're digging out evidence, which is way, way back before um, the white people, I would say, come to the source of Fiji and the Pacific and probably all around the world. Mm. Yeah. 
Okay. So that's basically my take on uh, mm. on the vanua of uh, Suva. Eh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, uh, yeah, they always claiming that it belongs to them, and I think rightfully so. It belongs to the vanua of uh, uh, to the to the Suvavo people. Yeah. Mm. The Naka. Yeah. So it's interesting as well to uh, Dr. Kirsty to dig deep a little bit into the Polynesian Company, because I've yeah, always yeah. wanted to know who were the people behind it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hang on. Yeah. Did I? Do we still have the? Oh, that's a bit of. Oh, did you want to talk about this first? We might have yeah. taken out the, the slides about Polynesia Company, but. I'm going to write an, a piece which goes into more detail about how they were plotting here. I think it was in the 18, 1868. They were mm. making plans in Melbourne for how they would take, kind of take over Suva and slowly yes. push people out and, and say, you know, if we do it gradually, it won't be such a problem. Um, so mm. they had this whole strategy of colonialism. So, yes, because uh, yeah, I, which is I why found I out that which yeah. is why I use that word intrusion because it's like mm. um, because I found out the names of those two men that came uh, Brewer and Evans um, yeah. they arrived in from Fiji in 1868 I was actually thinking about this because it goes back even before Fiji was ceded to Great Britain mm. so so the seeding of, uh, of Fiji was in 1874 so this plan was still was brewing um, from the time that the Kumbau was ruling in his own government. Mm. Um, yeah, so, and the, yeah. I think um, it's really important with Fiji to know the, the role that missionaries played in coming into the islands and, and paving yes. a way for colonialism and then companies as well. And so many of them were coming out of Australia and New Zealand rather than Britain, or they were, or they were British coming via Australia and New Zealand after many decades here or at least a few decades so um, yes. yeah it's really I think those connections and the power dynamics are really important. Yeah absolutely because I can see you know with Suva eh? um, so 1882 Suva became the capital but long before that 1868 uh, and even before 1868 the as you were saying yeah the plan was brewing in Melbourne Oh. And as you said, you know, that intrusion or the plan to actually take over Suva. But by the time they were talking in, uh, in Melbourne, there were people actually living there. Uh, I mean, the people of Suva, uh, oh. our indigenous Sitoke, they were living um, in Suva itself. So uh, I was just thinking, you know, how can uh, they be talking about this without considering that on that particular land that they're going to take over, there oh. are people living there. Well, they, mm. they considered it, but they considered a way to move them. That was exactly. it. <laughs> the relocation. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Um, hmm? Yeah. And so what was the slide before this, uh, Dr. Um, oh, so um, it was one about, so some of the early records talk about Suva being burnt to the ground. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, and then some of the first, like what you were just saying, um, mm. some of the early Europeans were coming in and were setting up along um, Nambukalau Creek. And that yes. was really where the European settlement started. And then mm. it expanded out. So as, as time went on, like by 1868, it was becoming a more formal plan to set up space. Mm. So I think on this link, for those of you who are watching, and Dr. Nick uh, Halter is uh, watching as well. So this is their website that they've actually created uh, from the University of the South Pacific. So uh, Dr. Nick uh, Halter and your students, uh, really, really useful uh, digital archival information. And I also did uh, some research on Coleman Hall Award this gentleman who wrote this article um, on the Domondoma Journal. So the Domondoma Journal, for those of you who are listening in, it's the, uh, a quarterly journal uh, produced by the Fiji Museum. So it has really, really good um, uh, stories and historical information about Fiji, uh, and they sell it. So if you are planning to do research on Fiji, try the uh, gift shop at the Fiji Museum. 
and um, go down to the shop and buy a copy because uh, that's another revenue opportunity for the museum. But these books, they are, a, they are full of gems. Um, I just can't uh, say enough about the Ndomo Ndomo journals. They're a really, really good resource. But anyway, what I found out about um, uh, Coleman uh, Wall, that he was um, also a curator um, uh, of the Fiji Museum before it became the Fiji Museum now. And I think that's why I included the picture. Um, so the picture oh, yeah, of the museum yeah. now, uh, this was the museum in 1955. Ah, okay. Yes. Yeah, so this was the museum at that time. But I think for those of you who were following my Instagram post, I actually mentioned about the library, the Suva City Library, the Carnegie building. That was the one of the, the first site of the Fiji Museum. It was called the Fijian Society in 1901. So that's how the Fiji Museum um, you know, moved along. I started at the Suva City Library and then I think it got burnt. And then it ended up in Nasova. Um, and then it ended up here in 1955. So um, interesting to see the history of the Fiji Museum, but Coleman Wall was actually a curator. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Colonial. I'm sure, yeah, I'm pretty sure Dr. Nick likes um, that publication too. I'm sure he told me about it. Yes. Um, did you want to talk about Thurston? I think you wrote yeah. this slide. Yes, yes. Yeah. So this is just to kind of, you know, bring up the, you know, the naming of uh, places, you know, we, the naming of places like right now, if you look at Suva, there's a lot of English names. I don't know with our Fijian listeners, maybe we should start renaming our places back to, <laughs> to Fijian. I don't want to create any negative uh, uh, repercussion about this, but why not? Look at New Zealand, uh, here in Hawaii, they are actually renaming places into the indigenous names that was known for. But anyway, we are, too, Tarisi, we are too, and you can put it on your envelopes if you're sending people mail now, put down the indigenous names of places and it will still go through in the post. <laughs> which um yeah so it's amazing that's right yeah so some of you may be wondering you know um who is thurston yeah the thurston garden mm -hmm. so this is thurston this is his picture yeah so he's he was one of the governors of fiji uh i think he was number five on the list uh so his name was sir john bates thurston uh oh yeah yeah he's number five mm -hmm. so he was the fifth governor of fiji um from 1888 to 1897 um and so in his memory um the garden which was actually part of the old suva village uh was named after him and uh the actual garden that we are we have now at the fiji museum which is now administered by the suva city council um was built uh, created in 1913. So where the Thurston Garden is, I think someone is asking about the old village site of Suva. Yes, where the Fiji Museum is and the Thurston Gardens, all the way to Nasova, all those areas, that was the old Suva village. I think that's something for us to ponder on. Uh, mm -hmm. All the places around Moanikau, uh, Nasese, all that area was Nakoro Suva. Mm. Mm -hmm. And Oluwatu was like the hill fort, eh? Yes. Mm. Yes, and Oluwatu was more like the, the hill fort for their protection. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so when the enemy ship arrives in the harbor, mm. um, they used to have uh, somebody up there as a scout to warn them that there is an enemy um, Nrua or double hull canoe approaching. Mm. And then they left to run up to um, Oluwatu. Right. Yeah, it's kind of like their safe haven, like their, the, uh, the fort for protection. Eh? Yeah. So you can imagine there is the way the governor general's house. Mm. They used to call it governor general, but now the president of Fiji. Eh? That used to be the whole, the old uh, Suva a village. The eh? Nasar. Yeah. Mm. So I think yeah, it's a very good point uh, with some of the places where Kali uh, mentioned it. Eh? I mm. think some of our Fijian listeners, Kalara uh, say Salelewa, Salelewa, Vinakabakle Merenaido. So a few of you who are connecting in online, um, yeah, maybe I'll just read out these names. And I think mm -hmm. as indigenous Fijians, you know, for us to reflect on these names and Kali actually made a good point because some of these names are also written in the dialect of the day. 
Yeah. You know, like Samambula. Um, uh, what's the other one? Uh, Tamavua. Tamavua. Mm -hmm. eh? Vatuanga. Vatuanga. Mm -hmm. Nauluvatu. Nauluvatu. Yes, Suva. Mm -mm. um, Nukulau. Muanikau. Muanikau. Nasese. Nasese. Nasova, even. Nasova. Mm -mm. Yeah? And Laudala. Laudala. Mm -mm. So I think it's important that uh, something that I want to highlight from Atalanoa today, eh, Dr. Kirsty, is to look at the place names in Fijian and also now for us to look at the place names in English. Uh, because some of us, when we were born, the only thing we see is Queen Victoria Parade. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just wanting to know how many of you know who Queen Victoria is. Mm -hmm. So this is her picture. Uh, this is Queen Victoria. Uh, she was born in 1819 and uh, she died in 1901. So if you look at the year of her life and uh, up until her death, so she was alive during the key uh, time of when Fiji uh, was set up as a colonial country, you know, mm -hmm. colonial nation of Great Britain. And um, she was also very influential in dealing with uh, Sir Hercules Robinson, Sir Arthur Gordon, mm -hmm. the earlier governors mm -hmm. in the management of Fiji's resources. Mm -hmm. um, that is something that was really, really beautiful about this woman here, even though, uh, you know, some of us, you know, will be thinking, oh, you know, these are all our colonial masters of course you know we cannot change what has already been done but let's reflect on what was done eh, at that time and let's learn something from the past and use it for today um, one thing i learned from uh, queen victoria dr kirsty and kali eh? i know you'll know mm. would you like to share mr Bunindilo? um yeah he he knows some stuff about uh, uh, the queen and um, well uh, not really. The only, the only thing I know is all, <laughs> all the queens, uh, uncle and um, and relatives, they all died at a very, when she was a, a young girl, when she was single, she was unmarried. Mm. And she's got royal connections to Germany. Yeah. Mm. So when you think about uh, way back before World War One or World War II, uh, there was always connection between them. Yeah. Uh, kind of like the royal blood. If you do, if you do some research, you check out the 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 history of uh, some little bit of uh, digging on Queen Victoria. Then you realize that there were a lot of things happening even mm -hmm. before uh, she was uh, married uh, to yeah to uh, to the to the husband. Eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and even in the formative years before Fiji was ceded. Mm. to Britain in 1874. Uh, I remember Fiji was kind of like seen about three times and they rejected it. And I think the fourth time then finally, uh, Fiji was allowed to be uh, to be looked after by Britain. So yeah, interestingly, there was, uh, yeah, and I, and I can fully understand the formative years of how they were trying to develop whether to accept Fiji or not. Huh? Um, Queen Victoria was uh, actually got a, a soft spot. Huh? For Fiji, I think learning from uh, New Zealand, yeah, from Australia, the, yeah, from the mm. other uh, colonies mm. of uh, Britain, she decided to make sure that the Fijians don't lose their land, they keep their culture, and uh, do, and and leave them in their uh, villages, yeah, because mm. I think they've uh, learned from other uh, places where they've actually uh, taken away uh the the land and the languages mm. of those indigenous people eh? mm. and up until today you can look at the the consequences of of what the the colonial system did to those indigenous people mm. so when it came to the time for fiji and look at nine or 1901 before she passed away mm. she was kind of like uh, reaching the mature age of or probably between 60 70 and 80 mm. so she's she had kind of like a, a soft spot for fiji eh? mm. so all the governors that were sent to fiji especially sir the garden mm. has got a lot of experience working on a lot of those uh, a colonial out outpost mm. literacy yeah. in uh, Africa, in Natal, especially, and then uh, and the Caribbean, and the Trinidad, Car Trinidad, yeah, and the Mauritius. He was working there as well. Mm. So when Sir Arthur Gordon came to Fiji, uh, Queen Victoria played a really important role mm. in instructing her to make sure that the Fijians are left alone. Mm. Make sure you protect their land, look after their chiefs, uh, 
And um, mm. yeah, it's really not weird, I would say. Special. I think Fiji is uh, yeah, uh, probably really special from a colonialist point of view. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah, and I think Lela, uh, Lela Luvu, Vinakabalibu Lela. So Lela is talking about uh, Queen Victoria School. See, so you can see that the Queen Victoria here, we have a Queen Victoria Parade, uh, or Victoria Parade in short, uh, but also um, Queen Victoria School. Um, so it's really good to see the, the colonial administration making its way for the naming of roads, as well as the naming of schools. So fascinating eh, to actually see. And um, just to follow on from what Mr. Bunindilo said was, um, yeah, from 1840, when the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in New Zealand, eh? you can see the impact of it on the Maori people, as well as uh, you know what was happening years before that in New Zealand, in Australia, uh, on the treatment of the Maori, uh, the um, Aborigines, eh? um, and the list goes on. Eh? I think uh, Kara um, Sale, yeah, I think one of our sisters here, Kalara Saleleawa. Eh? Uh, was mentioning that under her reign, the expansion was huge. Oh, yeah. So definitely if Fiji was included, we are a tiny dot in the whole world. Um, then you can imagine the expansion, the British expansion around the world. Yeah. And, and that's also another reason, Dr. T, why, why they, there was this um, discussion going on in Levuka mm. uh, for Fiji to be ceded to Britain. They were saying, why can't Australia look after Fiji? Or why can't New Zealand be annexed to New Zealand mm. and New Zealand can manage Fiji? Because uh, there was basically nothing interesting about Fiji. <laughs> well, the people are interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of resources <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for Britain. Eh? Yeah, because they got everything they need. That's why they, they rejected the offer three times. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but I think, uh, be, uh, yeah, basically because of, of Queen Victoria, you know, she's got a a soft spot about indigenous people and and particularly the Fijians. Yeah, he said uh, probably do a trial run of Fiji and see how things go. Mm. You know, don't force our policy on them. Mm. Allow them to do to coexist with the with the colonial administration, and then allow them to have their own Fijian affairs and their own development policy to make sure that they remain in their land. So that's why they develop all this. Uh, a sophisticated infrastructure through Sir Arthur Gordon. And uh, I would say this um, uh, Paramount Chief of Fijiratu, Sir uh, Lala Skuna, uh, setting up this institution of mm. the native uh, land uh, administration system. And now they've got an institution that looks after the, mm. the, the native uh, land owners, eh? mm. which is called now the Itoke Land Trust That's Board. Right. Yeah. So I think through those experiments, I would say, um, probably the Fijians were, yeah, were well to look after, probably up until today. What do you think, Dr. T? Yeah, and mm -hmm. I think, you know, it'll be interesting as well when uh, Dr. Kirsty is going to talk about the impact of the missionaries. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be another story, but yeah. uh, it's going to add a lot of flavor yeah, to, the, to the talk story. Uh, acknowledging Kelera Rayawa, mm -hmm. um, Waiwalu, uh, mentioning that QVS, Queen Victoria School, was established in 1906. So if you look at the date, she passed away in 1901. So the school was in her memory. Mm. Well, that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Okay, so this is uh, another gentleman, uh, Sir William Devo. Uh, so some of us would know the Devo Road. Uh, he was also one of the, the governors yeah, of Fiji. So I just thought I uh, bring some of these pictures of some of our governors um, so we, we can be able to put in, you know, in a picture form, uh, the names of the governors who were ruling Fiji during the colonial, colonial days. Um, and some of the streets are named after them. So one is the Devil Road. And He's this is his picture. Master, don't you think? Good master. Good yeah. Master. And look at him too. Look at Sir William Allardyce. <laughs> <laughs> so must be a, a in thing, must be a fashion at that time. <laughs> so Sir William um, Allardyce um, uh, was ruling as governor in 1901 to 1902. Yeah, Very and uh, the reason why I included his picture because he was the one who started the first museum. So before it became the Fiji Museum, he was collecting 
um, artifacts. So everywhere he traveled around Fiji, he was collecting things. And then he realized that within the short period of time, he's gonna start a small museum, which was housed at the Suva City Library. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is a picture of Sir Arthur Gordon, who was the second governor uh, by, uh, after uh, Sir Hercules Robinson. So Sir Hercules Robinson was the one who came in 1873 to set everything up, leading up to uh, the session um, in 1874. But then he actually came into power a couple of months later. I think it was around January or February of 1875 when Sir Arthur Gordon came in the picture. So he's named after Gordon Street. Yeah, so for those of us who are listening in, that's another favorite street in Fiji that we all know, Gordon Street. His name after him, Sir Arthur Gordon. Hmm. I think I, I just wanted to add that um, everything that Mr. Bonandillo has said, I, I think is so spot on. But I think often I think of Sir Arthur Gordon as being the one who was leading the charge with all those ideas because he was on the ground doing that work. But like you said, Queen Victoria needs to be considered in that bigger picture so much as well so yeah thanks for adding that in mm. yeah um other interesting thing about sir other god if you go back to sir other god uh dr d yeah uh he was 45 years old when he became the governor of fiji so he's got some 15 years of experience with new brunswick in canada he was the governor there mm. um also there was some research i found out that he was also the governor of Trinidad, as we said, mm -hmm. and Mauritius Island. So when he came to Fiji, he's got tons of experience. 15 years, that's a lot mm -hmm. as a young man. So if you take away 45, 15 from 45, he was 30 years old when he left um, uh, the UK to be appointed with these diplomatic uh, appointments to mm -hmm. go to Canada and then Trinidad and Mauritius. So um, he was well aware in those places of how to deal with native people. They usually call back the native. Mm -hmm. So he got that soft spot too for indigenous people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and, uh, Indian, and Indian migrants as well, because I know yes. more they had a pretty significant um, mm -hmm. yes. group of Indian yeah. migrants as well. Yeah, the Mauritius and even in Trinidad, I remember when I was there in 2012 for my mm. research, I remember say, arriving in the, uh, ep at the airport, I thought I was arriving in Nandi. Uh, there was so <laughs> much uh, connection between Trinidad and uh, Fiji, uh, you know, because of the presence of the Indian population. There's wow. so many of them there. And also when you're driving out into the uh, rural areas, they're just um, remnants of sugarcane farms. Mm. Mm. Something I've, I've noticed too about Sir Arthur Gordon, his father was Lord Aberdeen. And Lord Aberdeen was the secretary to the Prime Minister Gladstone. So you can see that when Sir Arthur Gordon grew up, uh, he's always aware of all these diplomatic relations. And I think as a young boy, probably he was sent to a very prestigious school back in England. And that's where he learned all this uh, diplomacy. Yeah, diplomacy and management skill mm. and how to deal with people. And it says here he's got excessive desire to be eminent, inner desire to be of the greatest and uh, to have power in terms of bettering human quality of life rather than material gain. Mm. That was uh, a little um, line that was written uh, about him in 2nd April, 1888. So they said that he's got this Victorian virtues of progress and reform. Mm. And that's what he did actually. Mm. Everywhere he go, he would try to reform the, the lives of the indigenous people. So luckily, I won't say luckily, I think blessed other Fijians mm -hmm. when he came over, he set up the foundation for developing, um, uh, I mean, he's got this will, the virtues of progress to reform and to make sure the Fijians are, um, uh, yes, yeah, set, set the foundation so that later on in the future, the Fijians uh, can uh, be really look after well. And we see the evidence today. There's a lot of um, good Fijians out there. You can rely them on Dr. Kirsty. Exactly. I'm so just looking at the time. We've been going for nearly an hour and a half. Do you want to? Mm. <laughs> do you want to keep going? Yeah, absolutely. 
people right, are right. waiting yeah no okay, problem okay. <laughs> so th thank you yeah because we've got our slides <laughs> so this is another photo uh dr Christie on fletcher so so after george murchison uh fletcher so this is to do with fletcher road yep next slide Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, over to you now, my sister. Okay, so yes, I mentioned um, Numbukalau Creek earlier as being where the first European settlement kind of sprang from, and it's where they started setting up um, the business district. So uh, Morris Headstrom was set up there, mm. and then over time, there was more of the market stalls set up along the creek. Mm. Um, so we found some photos of the creek and, and just wanted to highlight that it was a really important place where people were coming together mm. um, and where Tapu City is um, now as well. Um, and it's been redeveloped a few times. I had a bit of a clean out and redoing a, a facelift. Um, so, yeah, but this is um, just one of the photos from around the 1940s and mm. then um so yeah the markets were originally around there and then they shifted mm. to where the market buildings are now in um the early 1950s mm. so yeah much much um better protection mm. from the weather and all that sort of thing um which is good because occasionally there's hurricanes that go through and there was one a big mm. one in 1952 um, so that was one of the significant ones that seems to get talked about more in the records. But there's, a, I found a really good um, publication which goes through, I think it was called Dealing with Disaster or something like that, which has mm. the whole history of how people have responded to hurricanes in Fiji wow. um, over time for most of the 20th century. So this is just one of many, but it was one of the, hurricanes that started to attract a lot of international financial support mm. for, um, for getting Fiji back on its feet. So that was, um, I think it was significant for that. And just, yeah, there was, um, I think three villages that were destroyed in a landslide and just really awful. So um, yeah there's there's probably so many more that we could talk about in so many other aspects mm. of dealing with hurricanes that we could talk about but that was one that um stood out um oh yeah and we're back to the creek but this is the mm. 1960s so one of the facelifts happened in the 1960s um because it was getting a little bit smelly and a bit swampy at one mm. stage but yeah, it almost looks like Venice with gondolas and stuff in that bottom picture, I feel. So uh -huh. <laughs> got a real revamp. Um, and then going way back, this is the Jusky and Brewer plantation mm -hmm. that um, was a picture from Samuel Calvert, who was one of the missionaries that was set up um, and, and trying to record all his time around this part of Fiji. Mm. And they had a big sugar mill set up, but because of the, I think it was, they were struggling to grow the sugar because it became really granulated mm. and because the soil was thin and on soapstone. Mm -hmm. So that's, that just didn't take off um, better mm. off elsewhere. And you included this. This is Jusky's thumb, right? This is Jusky's thumb. Mm. Yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a, a land for me that we all know, uh, even remembering looking at it when you were little. Uh, I think it's also included in one of our social studies book. Um, and I was just looking at the name you mentioned in the previous slide. It talks mm. about Brewer and Evans. So do you think it's the same Brewer? That was part of the 1868 negotiations for Suva? I, I suspect so, because these mm. two were both part of the Polynesia Company as well, so far as I know. Yes, so, so they looks were, like. Yeah, they were in negotiations. I think oh, I've written it down somewhere what the year might have been. I think there was an article in an Australian newspaper in 19, no, 1873 that said mm. that the sugar plantation was set up and was you know maybe that was where it said it wasn't doing so well so 
definitely that 1860s period was really important for those, you know, the Polynesian company to come in and, and mm. do all that talking and then. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I love the picture because uh, this uh, lady, Kelera Raya, was going down memory lane mm. and she's looking at the picture and she's saying that's an old American embassy in Fiji near Nangangi. Uh, mm. Absolutely, yeah. Mm. So even right now in Suva, where the old uh, factory used to be, yeah. they have a big uh, monument uh, behind uh, home finance. Home finance. Yeah. Old Mills Cottage. Old Mills Cottage. It's, it's a beautiful CS, restaurant. CSR. Uh, yeah. Kind of. And they maintain the building. Yeah. 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 So oh, Kali and I, that's our favorite lunch spot. Mm. <laughs> Uh, they have really yummy uh, food over there. So yeah, the Joski Sam, but I thought, you know, I was going to include uh, Clive Alexander Brester uh, Joski uh, here, uh, you know, it's sort of a, a descendant, you know, of the Joski family. Um, mm. So that was just interesting uh, when I found this online. So he was born in Fiji um, and he was of Australian heritage and was educated in Melbourne. So I'm really enjoying this session with you, Dr. Kirsten, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that is connecting to Dr. Kirsten Melbourne. Yeah. And here we are uh, from Fiji and we are making all these connections. It's beautiful. Yes, and interestingly to uh, Dr. Kirsten that a lot of these, uh, um, yeah, uh, those that were living in Fiji, their sons were actually sent overseas uh, to do their um, education like high school and they go to university, they graduate, and then they come back to Fiji. Mm. So either they're sent to America, or they're sent to uh, Britain, or they go to Australia, or New Zealand, they're mm. descendants of the children. Mm. They were sent there for high school, they graduated at uni, then they come back to work uh, in their business in Fiji. Interesting. Yeah, no. mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm. Yeah, so. Yeah, I um, it's interesting, I should, because I can see we're getting up to the acknowledgement. So I was gonna say, so my granny in the 19, late 1920s and early 30s she was her parents were in Nailanga so she would be sent to school but she went to school in Suva so she'd have to get on the boat and go around the coast down to Suva and she could just remember jumping over the big ditches which were flowing with water after a storm mm. and all that sort of thing and it was for her being so little it was such a big adventure um but yeah, it's interesting. Like I think some of the missionaries' children had special rates to go to the Methodist boarding schools back in Australia, but um, not not all the time. Yes. Mm. Yeah, that is so true. Absolutely. And then also, um, if, before we conclude our Talano today, I just like to acknowledge everyone who's listening in the Nakavaka level for your patience and for. Uh, enjoying the Talano with me and Dr. Kirsty, and of course with Mr. Vunindilo for being our surprise guest <laughs> <laughs> uh, for today. Um, I just want to acknowledge the Colonial War Memorial Hospital. Mm -mm. Uh, so that's interesting that the Colonial War Memorial Hospital uh, was built and completed in 1923. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was built with the assistance of 3,019 no, 319,000 um, pounds in which it was built in uh, 1923. And it was open on the 2nd of December, 1923. Mm -hmm. Yes, because uh, I know I was born in that hospital. <laughs> uh, and I'm sure there's many others who are connecting online mm -hmm. who will have very fond memories of the Colonial War uh, Memorial Hospital. Uh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Really yeah. nice to go down memory lane. Eh? Yeah. So the Colonial War Memorial Hospital, as yeah. well as the, um, the GPH. Yes, that's right. We didn't talk about GPH. But actually, I was wondering if anyone online knows what was happening with hospitals before 1923, I would be very interested because Granny was born in Suva in 1921. But I just don't know where. <laughs> like, was there a hospital before? I could, I tried to find something, but I didn't have any luck. But um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know if anyone else knows anything. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Yes. And having asked that, um, uh, Kirsty, I hope uh, there are people listening in for for the government to build um, more new, better, well-equipped hospitals. 
I, I know they've got this uh, huge private hospital, which only people that can afford this, those that have insurance, you know? Um, I mean, it's nothing to, it's not a hush hush thing. It's something that we can openly discuss. Yeah. Mm. The discussion is not a bad thing. It's just an idea. And, That's uh, yeah. And even with a pre existing one, if they can just uh, renew all their um, equipment and uh, yeah, new things to be supplied. And, and you never know, there may be some mm. um, uh, private hospitals overseas. Mm. I think the only thing we are not talking about it. And if you speak loud enough and, and talk to people that usually come and help, mm. uh, that come and do free service to visit villages and help those that need medical help, uh, they can bring lots of equipment. It's just that we are not talking about it, that we're not shouting loudly that we need help assistance for our hospital. Mm. And they can bring better equipped uh, things. I believe that here in America, you know, America has got lots of resources and we can use those resources and connection mm -hmm. with people to help us, you know, why not? Yeah. Mm -mm. Absolutely. And I think to conclude our Talano today, uh, you know, just to highlight the, you know, the GPH, I know many of us, I normally go there for a nice evening drink <laughs> and uh, uh, to also use their Wi-Fi because they are really gracious with their Wi-Fi with the patrons that come there. It's a beautiful place just to sit there and look out into the ocean and see the mountains of Namosi. Uh, it's really nice. So the hotel was built uh, in 1914 mm. uh, by the Union Steamer, Steamship Company. Yeah, so again, it's really nice to know that now you see the modern day GPH, but it had some uh, facelift along the way. Yeah? So 1914, and it also mentioned that some of the famous guests for GPH were uh, Sir Charles Kingsford Smith. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so remember it's connected to Albert Park. Um, so he was the one that landed the plane uh, that was flown from California. Um, wow, yes, on yeah, that uh, first Trans-Pacific flight. Uh, from the USA to Australia. See, connecting back to you, Dr. Kirsty. Mm -hmm. And also the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, um, who is the granddaughter, right? Granddaughter of Queen Victoria, also mm -hmm. stayed there. I think in a visit in 1953, if I'm correct. Yes, um, 1950s. 19, yeah, 50 yeah. something. Yeah. And then, of course, the Duke and the Duchess of uh, Sussex came there as well. So yeah, so the GPH has got uh, a lot of the history of people, famous people mm -hmm. who came to stay there. And I was just interested to find out here as to why they built it. Uh, on this research paper, it says here that it was meant to serve the needs of passengers on its Trans-Pacific routes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So no wonder, see, Suva was meant to be the, you know, the second capital. Um, so I hope that this discussion is going to, you know, create more Talano amongst our people. And of course, with your beautiful research, uh, uh, Dr. Kirsty. Yeah, it's really nice to see that you also mentioned Suva eh, in, your, in your thesis. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, that's, yeah. And um, I think the, there were people like Hannah Dudley working in Suva in the 1890s before Dabui Levu was set up and the Methodist Mission headquarters kind of moved out that way. But um, yeah, Suva is really important for, for the Methodists as they transition away from Labuka. I mean, Viwa and, um, and Bao are really important as well. But yeah, gradually they moved towards Suva. Mm. And I also found out that the name Turek, uh, which is an interesting suburb of Suva, was connected to Australia too, and Melbourne. Mm. Yes, it's a very fancy suburb here. Yeah. So, mm. Oh, see? So everything seems to be connecting to uh, you, Dr. Kirsty. I think it's meant <laughs> to be that, uh, you know, we were having this discussion about Suva, uh, including it as part of our talk story. Mm -hmm. I know there's lots of people who are, you know, really appreciating our Talano today uh, mm -hmm. and acknowledging you, Dr. Kirsty, mm -hmm. for uh, giving your time to share your research. Mm -hmm. I think I saw someone was mentioning about um, the involvement of the church and uh, you know the the missionaries so maybe we can include that for next month for no sorry mm. 
Yes, yeah, I think for, for now, Zora, it makes a lot of sense. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Wow, wow, that's exciting. So maybe to conclude our uh, Talam Noah, we'll just give it to Kali to, uh, we just go around the three of us. Uh, one last uh, point that you want to share to our listeners. Yeah, I would like to acknowledge you, uh, Dr. Kirsty Close, here of uh, Vinakavakalevu, yeah, for putting in the effort to research about uh, Suva and especially um, uh, through the work of the missionaries. You know, sometimes we, we, we look at their work as uh, uh, people talk about a lot of negative things, but uh, when we when we have uh, when we are pessimistic and and we are always positive in the way we discuss things, we can change mindsets. And I think that's the reason of why people do research so that we can. Uh, it's something that is uh, evidence based, and we can always fall back on when we were lacking information on things that we want to share. Or if, uh, uh, say, people that uh, want to develop uh, policies, mm -hmm. they want to develop policies on how to to uh, encourage growth and development through society, they can mm -hmm. always go back to this uh, well-documented research, which is you are part of, uh, especially with uh, the development of our people back in Fiji. Eh? Mm -hmm. Like we are in Hawaii, we've spent now like almost 21 years away uh, from, uh, from Fiji. And I think this platform with Dr. T, I'm just here to support her with what she does, you know? <laughs> and people are, are really well engaged. They love the sharing and you being part of this journey. Uh, we really appreciate. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Dr. T. <laughs> and keep it up. You know, this uh, still, um, what, 10 months to go. Mm. And yeah. Uh, yeah, keep going. And well done. Congratulations. Mm. Binaka binaka. 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 It's just been so nice working with you both. And, you know, um, it's exciting to share this stuff that we know, um, you know, and get other people's input and start conversations because we don't know everything. And um, like this life is a learning journey. So I'm so keen, like, I can't wait to see what people have commented through this <laughs> to see what everyone's remembering. And um, like, yeah, it's been nice. I've been able to talk about my family, but like with Charles Kingsford, Kingsford Smith, I know that was one of the memories that they had um, in my family of the trees coming down at Albert Park and then him flying in. Oh. It was a big deal. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, all that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, suva has been such a special place through my research. So I haven't been back for, when did I go? 2017, it must've been. So yeah, it's been a little while since I've been back, partly thanks mm. to COVID, but yeah. Um, <laughs> It'll be wow. it'll be good to head back again. But yeah, no thanks, um, Banaka, to everyone for listening, and um, yeah, it's just such a pleasure. Banaka, to everybody listening in. It's really uh, encouraging. Um, I think from me, um, it's really encouraging our listeners, uh, young and old, you know, to do a lot of reading. You know, the more we read, the more we know. And I think we are really blessed now that we're living in a world of technology because back in my day, in the last century, I used to go to the library. Um, I don't have- In a the last century. In the last century, I used to go to the library. I don't have a computer. Mm. I have to go basically, you know, search the Dewey Decimal System cards yes. and uh, look through and the get the- catalog, corner, catalog system. The, the catalog look, system. Didn't you look it up on Google and your phone? <laughs> in the last century in the last century yeah. so I what my kids are going to be like when they're teenagers like, absolutely oh. absolutely so i just wanted to you know opeta is giving the thumbs up yes and uh, everybody's uh, uh saying uh you know all the different places vinaka vinaka vakalevo everybody you know for sharing and so going back to my journey to the library i love reading i used to go to the library i even love the smell of the book I don't know whether I was just a, a very weird student, but I normally smell the book. So um, when she I was, she was weird, Doctor Christie. Yeah. When you get the the dust yeah. off your nose in the archive, exactly. When I go to the library, home. yeah, I just go like this, and, and I smell the book, and I go through the pages, and I, you know, I just love it because you I know. To keep it subtle. <laughs> it needs to be subtle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a disorder. I'm it's not going with the. 
Yeah. It's, a dis, it's a disorder. Yeah, she's a bookworm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so thank you, Mr. Murindilo and uh, Dr. Kirsty. But for my friends out there, that's what I do in the library. I don't eat the leaves of the book, but I smell the book. Uh, I just love to read, and uh, it's just amazing. Sometimes I'm reading and I can visualize things, you know. Coming out of the book, I can visualize the tree and the river yeah. and everything. So I just want to share the joy of reading, mm -hmm. you know, to our parents listening in. Get more books for your children uh, and yeah. for your young ones. Read the books. I know there's a lot of digital stuff, you know, in computers and stuff. It's not the same if you're holding the book in your hand. Because you can smell it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm -hmm. to all our friends who are um, mm -hmm. um, uh, logging in today, and if you ask some questions and we didn't answer, we will answer it afterwards when we're going to be going through the comments. And mm -hmm. uh, next, uh, we, next month, exactly a month from today, on the first Saturday, we will be traveling to Nosori. So all our friends living in the Nosori place uh, of Vitilev, we will be talking about your beautiful town of Nosori and all the interesting things that happened there. Yeah. Naka, Naka, Naka Vakalev. Thank you, Dr. Kirsty. Thank you, Dr. Kirsty Venaka. Mode. Naka. Good yeah. night, everybody. Thank you. Naka Vakalev. Mode. Naka. <laughs> is uh...